clone of this really interesting little uh, agaricus bisporus white button mushroom I got at the store. I like how uh, it's kind of a double mushroom that grew into one one single unit. So I'm going to take a couple samples from this internally and put it on some agar and hopefully we can clone this and propagate it onto substrate and grow other mushrooms from this. And I'm hoping that if I do that from this mushroom, I'll get a genome that likes to do these double fruiting bodies that grow together like this because I've, I've always thought this was a cool mutation for mushrooms to have. So I'll be taking some samples from this, this part of the mushroom and this part of the mushroom. My, my setup is pretty simple. All I have is a stainless steel uh, medical tray right here. I use this because you can easily keep this sanitized and stuff like this. I have a uh, hand sanitizer. Whenever I do this, I don't really tend to wear gloves because, you know, like you sanitize your hands because we're all used to doing that from the pandemic anyway now. And it doesn't matter if you have gloves on or not like I think gloves tend to give people a false sense of security so I, I think that you're more aware of your your doings whenever you're not wearing gloves you're a little more deliberate with your actions and stuff of that matter so we're just gonna I'm not gonna wear gloves or anything like that because I just I don't feel like I need them for this I've done this before with this setup and I've had some pretty good success so let me pan here a little bit right back there Right here, this is a cheap HEPA filter I got from Target. And this I use in place of a laminar flow hood. It blows, you know, air through a HEPA filter that, that uh, filters out like, my, like particles down to like 0.3 microns or something like that. So this is really good for providing a nice steady flow of sterile air that you can work in front of, or I guess work in. And that'll keep a lot of contaminants away from a lot of contaminants from getting into your petri dishes here so that works pretty well and it's a cheap solution to a laminar flow hood but here i have some agar plates half of them are just regular agar plates with um light malt deck light malt extract and some yeast extract for nutrients the top three are clear and the bottom three have powderized activated carbon in them and that's just uh, for better contrast for mycelium uh, over here on my messy workbench, I have my Bunsen burner that I'm going to have that I'm going to turn on and I'm going to use this to flame sterilize. I don't have the, the blades on it yet, but I'm going to use that to flame sterilize each of the scalpel blades in between samples. That way if, uh, you know, every time I take a sample I'm working with a sterile knife. That way I don't have to use alcohol and stuff like that, which is kind of hit or miss sometimes. And then after I get these petri dishes inoculated with some clone sample, you know, some, uh, some mushroom sample, I'm going to put them into my new incubator, which works fantastic. And they're going to be in there for about a week. And we'll see how they take off. <clears throat> so I'm going to set up get everything ready and then I'm gonna start cloning these guys right here all right so to begin I'm gonna start by putting a small scalpel blade onto my scalpel handle I have my Bunsen burner lit off to the right here I have to kind of keep that out of the way so I don't burn my camera okay so I have a sterile blade on here but I still like to flame sterilize no matter, like, even though that that's a sterilized blade via gamma radiation and it tends to work pretty well, I still like to flame sterilize between each inoculation. So it just increases your chances of having successful propagation. All right, so I have that set and down there. I'm going to sanitize my hands again with sanitizer. Luckily, I have a lot of that left over. So that's good. So now it's time to do that. Wash once again since I touched that. And now start putting some samples onto petri dishes. 
hold my one petri dish down there. And if, if it seems like I'm having a weird time like breathing or something, it's because I am wearing a mask while I do this. Even though I have this laminar flow hood, it's just good practice to keep a mask on. And it's also something that we're used to doing a lot of now. But whenever you clone a mushroom, you don't want to cut. You always want to get something from the middle because your chances of contamination are lowest there. So break it, don't cut it, and that way you're not pushing contaminants down into the middle of the mushroom itself. And then you take just a small little chunk of the mushroom flesh and place it on the agar. Sterilize your scalpel until it's glowing hot to ensure that anything that might be present on it is dead. That's good. Give it a couple seconds to cool. That should be good. And then cut a little piece off here. And then do the same for the other compartments. I like these three compartment petri dishes the most because they like if you do get a contamination in one of the compartments the partition seems to kind of isolate the contamination so you have a decent chance of like maybe recovering your other samples and putting them onto more grow medium like I don't know plus they just look kind of cool and more sciencey I suppose is another reason why I like them all right flame sterilized again take a piece right here from the stem because this is kind of pithy and it might grow easier so I'll put it right down here on agar if it wants to cooperate it did not want to cooperate that's fine and whenever it does that I like to not have this lid open even in a flow like a HEPA sterilized air filter flow uh, I try not to keep the lids open more than like five seconds I mean, less than a second would be ideal, but whenever you're doing this, it's you know, sometimes you don't really have much of a choice to keep it open a little bit longer. But while I'm waiting for this to cool, you can see how this is two mushroom stems. So this is two little fruiting bodies that grew into one. And I'm gonna take some sample from here, which I probably can now. Yeah, my blade's cool enough now. I try taking another sample from here. I hold it down closer to the airflow. Like this. Now this is your best chance of getting sterile culture. That and then place it. There we go. That worked. I'm gonna set that up here out of the way. Bring another one down. I'm not gonna flame sterilize yet. I'm actually going to sanitize my hands again. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna flame sterilize my scalpel. And like I said, I do this between every inoculation. So you take a sample, you put it on the agar, you sterilize. You take a sample, you put it on the agar, you sterilize. It's just a it's just a pattern and kind of a routine and a you know like a rhythm that you kind of get into. And it might seem like kind of a pain in the butt for at first, but you know, you do it enough, it just kind of you know, it, it becomes pretty second nature to you. It goes pretty quick. But I think I'm going to use this one to take some sample right here from the smaller of the two fruits. Like that. Put that there, just drop it on the surface, quickly cover it, flame sterilize. Yeah, I kinda wanna, I'm gonna rip this small stem down the middle, as you can see, this didn't rip whenever I tore it in half. And I don't want to take any samples from here, I want to take it from the middle of this stem. So that's good as far as flame sterilization goes. There, rip the stem, count to 10, three, and my petri dish just fell down. Ah, crap, hold on. That's fine, I have a lot more. Take a little sample right here <clears throat> a 
So definitely put a rubber mat on top of that HEPA filter so that things don't slide around. Yeah, this is actually a pretty straightforward procedure and it's, it's pretty neat that you can grow mushrooms from a mushroom. I just think that's pretty cool. And that's always been fascinating to me. But I have a lot of weird interests. So what's cool to me is probably kind of strange for other people. But yeah, that's what makes us all interesting. We're all so different. All right. So he's black. All right, flame sterilized. Now I'm going to take these from that. I'm going to sanitize my hands with alcohol and with, with hand sanitizer. And while I'm at it, I'll do the handle for this. I know the blade is good. Since that was in open air and not in front of the flow hood, I'm going to sterilize with flame one more time. Okay. Now wait a couple seconds for this to cool down. That should be good. And then take a sample from in the stem here. One. Just have five more to go. And I'm just gonna stop talking and I'll speed this part up. I think you get the gist. has a contamination. I'm actually, I just saw that in the agar. So I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm going to use this one. I usually don't do that, do like one right after the other, but that's fine. inoculated sample size goes but it's mostly because the smaller your sample the less likely you are to get contamination. Last one for Garicus Bosporus. Letting this cool. One more little sample here and place it on the egg. Okay so now that's good. Now the only thing left to do is to label these. I will probably put some parafilm around them to keep moisture in, but let, a, let oxygen exchange still happen. And then just incubate them for about a week and see how they look. So that's all you do. Let it grow and I'll give you an update on how it looks here in a little bit, maybe about a week or so. All right, thanks for watching.